Hi guys, this is Todd Fool and for today, we're going to review the Topping E30 DAC. I compared the Topping E30 to the built-in DAC of the Blue Sound Node 2 and what I like the most about the Topping E30 is that it's very detailed yet pleasant sounding, it's very silent, it has a cyanide of 112 dB, which is even quieter than the topping D50S I reviewed before, which costs twice the price. And what's more is that I actually like the E30 better. It sounds more natural for me. It can function as a preamp. It comes with a remote. It looks quite nice. I like the orange display. And combined with a cheap streamer like a Chromecast Audio or a Raspberry Pi, you have a very decent streamer which sounds almost as good as a Blue Sound Node 2. What I don't like about the Topping E30 is that it doesn't come with Bluetooth, there's no EES, there's no balanced out, no MQA, and no other features that you probably shouldn't be expecting at this price. So maybe there's nothing really I don't like about it except that you could accidentally buy a Topping A30 or a D30 because those things are also available. What I hate about the Topping E30 is that they released it with a bug. So the unit I have has a bug which has the absolute polarity reversed. And while they were able to give out the firmware, it only fixed the USB and SPDIF users are still left out in the cold. The good news is that newer versions will have the issues fixed and that it actually doesn't sound too bad. There's a bit of change in the imaging, but overall the sound quality is the same, so you probably actually wouldn't notice it at all. But I don't think you should actually bother with the Topping E30 because you can easily buy an SMSL Sanskrit SK10 version 2. Remember version 2? And it uses the same chip. It can also function as a preamp and it's despite being cheaper, it actually is quieter at around 114 dB cyanide according to Audio Science Review. So I've been audibled. A great value DAC if it just wasn't broken. If you want to know more details about the comparison, please keep on watching. Up front, you have a clean and simple orange dash, which I think looks handsome, especially with a silver case. Inputs and resolution are clearly displayed. So despite being only 130 bucks, it looks quite sturdy and well built. Cyanide of 112 according to Audio Science Review makes it quite silent and outperforms much more expensive DACs, if only in benchmark alone. At the back, it's just a simple affair with RCA outs, coax, optical, USB, and power. Before we continue, Early versions of the Topping E30 has an issue wherein the polarity was reversed. The E30 I used here had that issue, so for my testing, speaker terminals were reversed. But I also tested with normal positive to positive, and while there were some changes in imaging, in position, it still retained the same level of detail and quality, so I would say that most people will not notice it at all, unless they are really familiar with the song. For the first test, I used two Blue Sound nodes. One connected to the E30 using coax digital, and the other was using the built-in DAC. For my test tracks, it was 3 out of 5 in favor of the E30. The Node 2 is a little bit more musical, a little bit more forward, but loses out in terms of clarity and detail. If I listen more to bass-laden tracks, I would probably go with the Node 2 and jazz, acoustics, and orchestra with the E30. The bass has more volume in the Node 2, which makes for a more satisfying listen. The E30 is slightly tighter, but lacks the oomph of the Node 2. The E30 is the more neutral sound and volume isn't actually lacking, but the Node 2 just adds more volume for a bit more fun. Mid-range is slightly richer in the Node 2, and the vocals are a little bit more forward. The E30 is a bit more reserved, sounding leaner, but also slightly more textured. The difference isn't actually that staggering, and I could go both ways. Highs are sharper and more sibilant than Node 2, which makes it the more exciting listen, but at the same time, you also lose some overtones that the E30 so easily provides. Soundstage is slightly larger in the Blue Sound Node. It doesn't have as much separation between the instruments as the E30, but it does compensate, as size does matter. 
at least in this case. In terms of clarity, there's no contest between the two, and the E30 sounds totally black in my treated listening room, giving a lot of advantage in headroom and ambient clues. Overall, the E30 is technically superior and the more neutral listen of the two. I do find that the extra bass and bite of the Node 2 a bit more satisfying during casual listening, so you may have to consider that when choosing between the two. If you already have a Node 2, then it won't be a significant improvement from the onboard DAC, and I would recommend against getting the E30 unless your budget is really, really tight. So just save up for a higher end DAC and with the Blue Sound Node 2. Given that the Node 2 is about $500, I did wonder how a Chromecast Audio and E30 for a combined price of $150 would compare. After all, at this price range, we can and we should pass those extra savings to better speakers. The results were unanimous this time, in favor of the more expensive Blue Sound Node 2, unfortunately, as I preferred listening to the Blue Sound Node in all of my test tracks. While clarity was still better in the E30 plus Chromecast combo, it sounded a bit muddier and wasn't as clear as it was before. It wasn't a truly big change, but it was enough to let the Node 2 come out on top. Bass is now as defined and as tight in the Node 2, if not more so, and with the louder volume really puts it ahead. Mid-range is still a batter of lean and rich, but vocals now sound more alive in the Node 2. Highs are still more etched out properly in the E30, soundstage is still bigger in the Node 2, and clarity is somewhat lower but still more silent in the E30 plus Chromecast combo. To be honest, I was really hoping the little guys would win, but it didn't happen. Still, I have to stress out that while the Blue Sound Node 2 is better overall, it wasn't a whole lot better and the E30 Chromecast is a fantastic combo that sounds great and adding $350 to your speaker budget has a much bigger effect than the changes between the two. Consider this. You have a Blue Sound Node 2 and an ELAC Debu 6.2s versus the E30 Chromecast and an ELAC Debu Reference 6.2s. Which do you think will sound better? Well, you actually don't have to think about that. As I always say, spend more first on the speakers, then amp, then DAC, then streamer. You'll get more bang for your buck that way. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, subscribe down below. See you in the next video.